Josh Easton here, Israel Uncensored from the Land of Israel Network at thelandofisrael.com. It is Monday, November the 7th, 2022. Hope you're doing well in your part of the world. I'm coming to you this morning from Jerusalem, the eternal capital of the state of Israel and the Jewish people on the outside, just outside the walls of the old city of Jerusalem. And we're going to hit up the Zoom right now. Good friend of mine, Yomi Groner. He is in the tourism industry here in Israel. He has his own travel company specializing in travel in Israel, Jordan, Egypt. You name it, you need a tour in the region. Yomi is your man. And we're not going to talk tourism right now. Maybe we'll get to that at the end. But we're going to focus on politics because Yomi has strong opinions when it comes as a citizen of the state of Israel, is a strong opinions as it relates to the election which we just had. Yomi, welcome to Israel Uncensored here on the Land of Israel Network. Thanks, Josh. I, I might have strong opinions, but I don't know if they all uh, uh, agree with them, uh, your, your, your fans of your show. Listen, everyone's entitled to their own opinion. And I will tell people every week, if you love the show, if you hate the show, if you disagree with something I said or somebody, somebody, uh, something one of my guests says, you just let me know. No problem here. We're all about having a discussion. So right now we have coalition negotiations right now. Prime Minister to be once again, Benjamin Netanyahu with a decisive victory in last week's election. He's now meeting with all the all the parties trying to form a government. He'll be meeting with them one by one. And dishing out portfolios, dishing out ministerial positions. What's your take on what we might expect here in the days ahead in terms of which uh, potential coalition partner would or should receive which position? So it's interesting because I think deep down, uh, the prime minister to be and former prime minister Benjamin Netanyahu really wants to make a coalition not with his uh, natural partners of the religious Zionism or, um, uh, and the Haredim. I think he wants the Haredi parties, but he doesn't really want to take the religious Zionist parties because if he does, he is going to be pushed into doing things that he claims he wants to do, but deep down he doesn't want to do. He doesn't want to mess with the judiciary here. He doesn't want to start separating the powers of the attorney general, and I'm not sure your uh, your uh, your 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 base understands. But in Israel, the attorney general not only uh, defends the government and its decisions, but it also basically goes after the government uh, for many of the decisions that he himself or herself is uh, preparing for the government to take which causes sometimes a little bit of a major conflict of interest. So let me, let me get this straight. You're saying that right now after five elections, and now we have uh, a seemingly stable right-wing coalition of 64 seats, you're saying that Prime Minister Netanyahu may blow that up and just ignore the fact that the religious Zionist party got 14 seats as the third biggest party. You're saying he may just ignore their demands and try to form a coalition perhaps with either Yamina, uh, with Lapid's party or Benny Gans, uh, the uh, combination party of Gans and Eisenkot and Gidon Saar. Is that what you're saying? I'm saying that's what he wants to do. I'm not saying he's going to do it, but that's what he wants to do. He's happy to have the ultra-Orthodox in his government, and people like Benny Gantz uh, and, their, and Gidon Saar and their party would also join a government like that. I think that deep, deep down, um, and this prime minister has many good qualities. He's done a lot of good things for the state of Israel. I've also been in disagreement about some of the things he's done, but he would rather have Benny Gantz uh, and even Yair Lapid than having to work with the religious Zionists. And again, the reason is, the reason is, is because deep, deep down, he knows he's going to have to take certain actions, which he deep down, even though he speaks so beautifully and eloquently in both Hebrew and in English, he doesn't want to do them. He'd rather the status quo stay about. And when I talk about the status quo, I mean the status quo vis-a-vis -vis the judiciary and uh, the police and all that, than actually deal 
and make the hard decisions. That's all I'm so, saying. I think so, at the end, he'll go with the religious Zionists and the Haredim because even his own voters um, have uh, demand it now. If you saw the uh, celebrations afterwards, after the election, you saw that they were yelling, and I shouldn't say yelling, they were cheering Mishilut, Mishilut, which is governance and governance. Not sovereignty here, but governance. They want to clean up what's going on in the South. They want to make sure that uh, 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 everyday security is taken care of, but it's going to take a massive, big uh, effort by the prime minister and uh, by even the opposition to join hand in hand to get these uh, things done. So Netanyahu, Prime Minister Netanyahu, even though uh, deep down he would like to form a, a government with Gans or Lapid or some of the others, he may in fact go with the religious Zionist parties. But what you're saying basically is that he still wants to kick the can down the road, which many of his critics have said, especially on the right which he has done time and time again on many of these issues that you talked about, whether it's judiciary, which, whether it's sovereignty over Judea and Samaria, whether it's dealing with, uh, you know, evacuating illegal uh, Bedouin building. I'm thinking of uh, Khan al-Amar there on Highway 1 leading up to the Dead Sea. Uh, you're saying he's going to, the, it's the same old uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu. I mean, a lot of people like him, but, you know, then again, you could make that claim that, you know, his... His uh, modus operandi, so to speak, is just to keep kicking that can down the road, passing the buck to the next guy. Yeah, I, 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 it's not that he just wants to kick the can down the road. I, I just, again, he would rather just keep the status quo going than actually make hard decisions. Look, it's, look, there are a lot of things here in Israel that are important to everyday Israeli lives. For instance, many people don't realize this. But Benny Gantz, as, as uh, Minister of Defense, signed on for the, um, uh, the where the generals get their, uh, uh, their uh, I forget the word, the, the use of it in Hebrew, and it's right now leaving my mind in English, but basically the pension plan. The pension plan is, causing, is costing Israelis over a trillion shekels a year, which is absolutely ridiculous. There has to be, people are always complaining about the cost of living in Israel. There are a lot of things that go into that. One of the things is, is that we need someone in the defense ministry who is going to start making some hard decisions about how some of these generals get paid, even though they're getting money from other uh, 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 revenues, be it that they give their name on boards and such like that, they still get a tremendous amount of money uh, from, uh, from, um, uh, from a pension fund. This has to change. This is something that Netanyahu is going to have to put someone in into the Ministry of Defense and change it. It's not only Judea and Samaria issues. It's about other issues that have to change in this country. That is, I personally think that's what the um, that's what was given right now to the right wing to do. And people are expecting them to make some very hard decisions. Another thing which people never seem to talk about is the regulation that this country sticks to small businesses. Now, people think that the prime minister can change everything. It's not just the prime minister. The regulation with small businesses, for instance, paying insurance to keep your business afloat. If you don't pay, if you don't, you know, there's so many regulations about a small business building itself up. The Ministry of Finance uh, has, to, ha has to change that. So I'm looking at someone, let's say, like near Barkat, who I truly hope, as a member of Likud, will become the Minister of Finance. I'm hoping he's going to make some very hard decisions and go up against the very big uh, uh, insurance companies and banks in this country and cut the cost of doing small for small businesses in this country. Hey, these are a lot of issues, by the way, that a lot of people are not paying attention to, especially, you know, maybe these are less sexy topics uh, uh, here in Israel, a lot of people like talking about the peace plan and a lot of, a lot of like, you know, people talking about that sort of stuff and they ignore the day to day lives and the stuff that you were just bringing up of the things that we have to go through as tax bank citizens here in the state of Israel. Are you uh, optimistic, though, based on the election results that we might see if it's not Netanyahu himself, maybe some of the other players that you just spoke about, uh, spoke about, whether it's Bar near Barkat or some of the others? Do you think that they will, in fact, 
make the necessary changes in order to improve the daily lives of Israelis, cutting the cost of living, for example, and some of the other stuff you mentioned. Are you optimistic after these election results? Well, I'm always optimistic. Uh, the question <laughs> is if people will deliver. Uh, you know, everyone goes into uh, Sunday when they're playing football thinking they're going to do well. But then, you know, the, the, the game starts and sometimes, what did Mike Tyson say? Everyone has a plan until my fist goes into their mouth. <laughs> look, it's, it's a question. It, it, look, there, I am optimistic because, again, um, one of the people who was just uh, given a huge mandate uh, is a uh, member of Knesset, Vital Smotrich. Now, there are things about Vital Smotrich that I don't agree with what, what he says. But if I'm looking at factual evidence, I can see as a person who ran the Ministry of Transportation, how he truly works for the entire country. And I think having a guy like that, and I hope many more people, I really do hope people in the Likud and people within the ultra-Orthodox Gimel Party and Shas not only work for their own voters, but they work for the uh, overall citizens of Israel. I think there can be a lot accomplished, but, and it's very important to understand, you know, getting things done, you have to move an entire organization. It's not enough just to scream and yell and go on and, and, and tweet out uh, ideas. You have to move and create the abilities for the people working in your ministry uh, to move and go with your ideas Go and move them forward. Make sure that the changes are made in a very good way. One of my biggest criticisms of the last government, and by the way, I had no problems with the last government, but I would say one of my criticisms of the government was a woman like Meirav Michaeli, the Ministry of Transportation, who was very good at making TikTok uh, videos, but didn't really get anything done. And people have to understand uh, people like Itamar ben -Gvir, if they're going to be, let's say, for argument's sake, they will be in charge of the internal uh, security. They have to work with the police chief and the police, uh, police uh, 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 senior leadership to get the message down, what he wants to accomplish, and to move it forward. It's not enough just to go on to, let's say, Channel 14 or Channel 12 and spout your ideology. You have to have concrete plans, a business plan of how do we move the things that we want to get done, done. Two things. Number one, I'm going to agree with you on the transportation issue. It just took me over an hour to get to Jerusalem. That's completely unacceptable. That's completely outrageous that I should be stuck in that kind of traffic. And I know Israelis all over the country are, you know, gridlocked on a day-to-day -day basis. And the other thing is I'm going to write down your Tyson quote because I like that very much. Um, we're, all, we're almost out of time here. I'm going to add to your title now, political analyst. That's it, man. You're not just a, uh, a travel uh, expert, but I do want to ask you how things are going now in that field, in the tourism realm. Now that, you know, I guess Corona is not really gone completely, but the tours are certainly back. This was a very, very busy summer. Um, what can we expect in the travel and tourism industry here in the region as we're heading towards uh, the winter, and then we're going to let you off the hook. Travel is back. It's great. I would tell people to come here to Israel. Uh, there's traveling going on also now in Jordan and in Egypt. And I always recommend to people, you know, come here. Don't come with any pre-notions. Forget about what they write in whichever paper you come from. Just come here. People here are nice. It's uh, sometimes it's intense. It's a different culture here. Just be prepared for that. But the people here are really nice wherever you go in Israel. Uh, if you go to Jordan, Judea, Samaria, wherever you go, Egypt, everyone is nice. They're all there to uh, uh, show you, uh, you know, their history and their culture. So just, you know, pick up and come. Uh, and that's the best advice that I can give you. And how can people get in touch with you, Yomi, if they're listening in the States right now, they're planning their trips to Israel and are looking for a great tour guide? Uh, who could show them the, the reality of the situation here and give them an awesome and fun experience in all parts of the land of Israel and the other countries you mentioned. How can people reach you, man? So they can reach me via my personal email, which is uh, my last name, Groner, G-R-O-N-E-R, -E at gmail.com. 
Uh, and if I'm not available, I'm always, I work with a lot of people. They're all very good. They'll all show you a great time. Uh, and that's the best way. And if you didn't catch that, you can always get in touch with me and I'll put you in touch with Yomi Groner, who, by the way, is also a legend in the world of football in Israel, a legendary quarterback and a legendary say, player <laughs> on the big blue, kind. on the big blue the only, team. The, <laughs> in the American Football is, League in Israel. Yeah, oh, you're a legend. Josh, Don't be it, humble. Don't be humble. It, it, it's, it, it's very <laughs> kind of you. The only thing I could say is I, I would probably have done better last night against the Lions and Aaron Rodgers did. Let's put it to you that way. <laughs> I don't even want to talk about my Colts. We're going to leave that for another day. You know, I don't want to. I don't have to start drinking here by before eleven a.m. So we're gonna we talk we, right so Indianapolis. Josh, we should start. We should start a Monday. <laughs> we should start a Monday morning, a, a, you know, podcast about football games on Sunday. Yeah, that that is an idea. I'm gonna recommend it to the guys who run the Land of Israel Network and see if they want to get into that arena. Usually, it's politics and all the other stuff, but maybe they want to get into something a little lighter we should down get the road. It, we, should but... get them, we should get them into football, into sports betting. That's what we should. Work <laughs> on. I'm sure you'll have a lot of followers a lot of listeners from that but Yomi Groner get in touch with him if you want a great time here in the land of Israel appreciate his political insight into our last election I thank you for your time sir and uh, hope to see you again very very soon take care Josh thank you and we're going to take a short break here on Israel Uncensored on the land of Israel network at the land of Israel I'm going to come back with part two of the show we're going to break down a little bit more of the election and other stuff going on here. Of course, a lot of terrorism, unfortunately, over the past week and a lot of other things going on here. And we'll finish as we try to do every week with some uh, some positive news. And there is positive news out there, folks. Don't get me wrong. You know, sometimes it seems like everything is negative. Sometimes it's only politics and a bunch of terrorism, and crazy stuff. But there's a lot of positive coming out of the Jewish state of Israel. We'll get to that as well. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back.